Hey everybody, Bob here with Making Stuff, and before I get this video started, I would like to try something different. And I'm going to have a little bit of a contest here. Uh, it'll be a contest of sorts, but uh, if you're the first one to put in the comments the correct answer, then you get to be the grand poobah, king of the comments for a day. Uh, we'll try this out and see how it works. Maybe it's something we can do on a regular basis and uh, maybe in the future have some prizes. But just for fun, we're going to try this out this one time. And this is a tool that I got from an estate sale. It was in the bottom of a toolbox that I bought. And it took me about two months to figure out exactly what it is. So if you know what this tool is, put your comments. If you think you know what it is, put your comments in the uh, for the video. And like I said, the first person who puts the correct answer gets to be the grand poobah king of the comments. And I will tell you what it is not. It is not a compass. It does not hold any type of a drawing utensil at all. So, Okay, so on to the video. Now this video is a project that came about because I would routinely take my garden hose, place it in the horse's water trough, turn on the water, and think that I would come back in 20 minutes and turn the water off. Of course in that 20 minutes I would go do something else, get distracted, forget about it, come back two or three hours later, and the yard's flooded and I've wasted all that water. So I wanted something that I could use for the water trough and also the water buckets in the horse stalls. And what I wanted is something that I could just place on the side of the container that can sense when the water gets up to the top and then cuts it off. So that's what this project is. It's an automatic water cutoff valve that can sense when the water gets to a certain level and turn it off. And it's 100% automated, so if you place it on that container and you walk away, you come back to a full container, not a flooded yard. Okay, so here's the plan for this project. The first piece is going to be this 12-volt solenoid valve, and I have no idea where I acquired this from, but I've had it for a while and we're going to use it on this project. So we're going to have the valve and our electronics will turn this on and off and that's what's going to start and stop the water flow. These are some type of uh, thread so what I'm going to have to do is use this adapter and I just got it at the hardware store and it adapts this thread down to what you could hook a garden hose up to. So that's going to go on this end then on the other end, I am going to have this piece of PVC pipe. And it is just two little scrap pieces of PVC. I got two 90 degree elbows and then a threaded end here that matches the threaded end on the solenoid valve. So the problem is they're both male threads. So I've just got this adapter we will screw it together like so and then put our valve on the end and then there you have it. There is the entire mechanical water flow mechanism, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the electronic side of this project is just as simple. We have a 12 volt relay, an AT Tiny 85 a blocking diode and a transistor. The transistor turns the relay on. Um, these are a voltage divider and all that does is I'm using a 9 volt battery so this will reduce the voltage down to 5 volts for the uh, AT Tiny 85. It won't handle 9 volts. Now I know what you're asking. This is a 12 volt relay. You got 9 volt battery. It's rated 12 volts but 9 volts will turn this on and off with no issue. It's the same with this solenoid valve. It's 12 volts, it's rated 12 volts, but 9 volts turns it on and off. The uh, wires coming out here, the black and white's going to the relay, and the blue and the green is going to go to the water. So now, how do we turn the water 
off when it gets to a certain level. Well, if you've seen my other video uh, monitoring a horse water trough, we're going to use the same principle. Water will conduct electricity. So what I plan on doing is taking two of these stainless steel hose clamps and I'm going to put it on the water end of my PVC pipe like so. And you want to be sure and use stainless steel because they will rust if you don't use stainless steel. And the idea is when the water raises up and it touches both of these hose clamps, it's going to complete a circuit which will tell our AT Tiny 85 to stop the flow of water by turning the relay off. Okay, so I've got this all set up. I'm going to do a dry run here. I've got a little Dixie cup with some water in it. And let's do a little test here. So the idea is when I push the red button, it will deliver 9 volts to the solenoid, which I'm going to show here with my multimeter. And it should continue to deliver 9 volts to the solenoid until these two wires get wet. So let's try it out. There we go. We've got a little over 8 volts. My 9 volt battery is a little weak, but it does work. You can see the relay is turned on. We've got voltage. So now I'm going to dip these wires in the water. And there we go. It has turned itself off. So I believe I'm ready to assemble this and uh, see what we can come up with. Okay, I just want to point out a few things here. First, I secured the PCB to this box using double-sided foam tape. And yes, this box is a little bit bigger than what I need, but it's the smallest one I had here in the shop. Um, also, I put a rubber grommet here that will help water keep water out. We are going to be controlling water, so you never know what's going to happen that could splash on here. This box is not rated for any type of water tightness or waterproof, but I think it will work fine for this project. Um, I certainly wouldn't submerge it in water, but if some water splashes on here with this rubber grommet on there, I think it'll be fine. Uh, I'm not worried about it. I'm also going to put a piece of foam rubber here because the box is a little too big that's going to keep the battery from sliding around bumping into things inside the box and also last but not least um, I took my belt sander and put a little flat edge here and that's going to help mount the pipe to the box and keep it from uh, rolling around so here is the final assembly I've got my hose clamps here. I've got the two wires. Uh, when they get wet, we'll turn off all the electronics in here, and my solenoid valve, and my end where I can hook a garden hose. So let's go to the barn and see how this works. Okay, I'm down here at my water trough. I've got my device hooked up to it. It's just hanging on the side here. And I'm going to hit the button and we're going to top this uh, water trough off and we'll see how well this thing works. Okay, you can see this first hose clamp here. It's already wet. The water's still running, but it's just about ready to touch that second hose clamp. And when it does, it, there it goes. It just shut off. So now the water has touched both hose clamps. It's completed the circuit and it turned the valve off and this trough that's just residual water in there but this trough will not overflow or overfill and we won't waste any water all right so i've moved here into the barn this is uh, one of the horse's water buckets and i'm gonna hook the device here on the bucket hit the button and let's fill it up you can see the water is flowing there And as soon as that water touches both of those hose clamps in there, it should shut off. There you go. It just shut off. I got a full bucket of water here. You can see the water flow has stopped. So this is, this is a great little device. This is going to come in real handy around the farm. 
Um, I can think of a lot of uses for it other than just the horse application, but uh, I'm very well pleased with it so far. Thanks for watching and please be sure and hit that like button if you like what you saw. Also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And don't forget the mystery tool here. Put your guess in the comments and thanks for watching.